My name is Mike Wells. I'm the principal moderator for OCR's unit Y100 of A-Level History. This is the non-examined unit, the topic-based essay. This video is a guide to help teachers understand the standards that moderators are looking for when marking these essays. Please click on the link below to download the annotated version of the script used in this video. The essay that you're going to see is an A standard essay. I'm going to start by looking at the title. To what extent was Italy united by 1896? The question asks for a judgment about the extent of unity. And this is an issue which has been debated by historians, so the title in itself is suitable. The period is not too broad and it's not too narrow. The essay deftly sets out uh, the view that there was a lack of unity, and there was a failure uh, among Italian governments, and it also sets out a counter view with historians such as F.G. Stapleton, which question this idea of disunity. So at the very start of the essay, there's a debate established, which is one of the key requirements for A01. So in terms of annotation, uh, simply writing INT by the side of Duggan, Morris and Murphy, and INT by the side of Stapleton indicates that the, the interpretations are set out and established. Now, the essay then very, very helpfully sets out how the whole investigation is going to proceed. Uh, first of all, by looking at economic unity and disunity, then by looking at religious unity and disunity, and then by looking at political unity and disunity. So this whole opening paragraph is a very neat and clear introduction which shows the reader that there's going to be a discussion, which is one of the key requirements of AO1, and how that discussion is going to be organised. So it would uh, uh, be appropriate to say uh, a good start and a line of argument established because uh, at the end of the paragraph it says while the economic and social factors are cru crucial in assessing the unity, the political factors and the failure of representation, representative government will be the most important. So there's a distinction made between the factors, which is a helpful indication of where the argument is going to proceed. It's never wrong for candidates to say what they think early on in the essay. It helps the reader. It also indicates that there's going to be uh, an argument which is going to be pursued. Now, the candidate follows the plan by looking, first of all, at economic unity and disunity. Uh, this is helpful, but the link with unity could be rather clearer here. Uh, there is a reference to uh, a historian, uh, which is appropriately footnoted, which argues misery and lack of investment produce a harvest of social agitation. But of course, it isn't social agitation that's the key here. It's unity. So a certain amount of inference has to be made. But the alienation of the countryside and the rural agitation could imply disunity. However, it's never wrong for candidates to come back to the wording of the question. In your general guidance, it's always helpful to to explain to them that reading between the lines is not your job or the moderator's job. It's their job to make the link with the question ideally clear. However, I think that, that there is enough here to make the direction of argument clear. There is knowledge applied to the interpretation. There is some detailed factual knowledge, which is a requirement for the top level of AO1. But please be careful when annotating not to suggest AO1 top level simply on the basis of one section. If this was sustained, this use of detailed knowledge to test an interpretation, then that would be very good. But don't throw yourself by uh, indicating that this is uh, instantly the top level. The level has to be sustained. But nevertheless, there is through this a paragraph on page two, some detail, and also there is a distinct critique here of Stapleton. Now, ideally, Stapleton's interpretation could be rather more expanded, but nevertheless, we're instantly, in this essay, early on in page two, we are taking a critical approach uh, to the historians. And that's something which needs to be annotated in the margin. 
Now, the unity comes more into focus towards the end of this page in contrast to the north, the disunity in agriculture more profound in southern Italy. So there is a balance in the argument about disunity, which shows that the candidate has been aware of, of sustaining a discussion and not simply an explanation. There is quite a critical view. And again, it's helpful to see at the end of the page, this supports the interpretation by Di Scala and Duggan. Looking at page three, it's quite clear now that the candidate is a little aware that the main focus of the answer has to be unity, and we're brought back to this when, in reference to the uh, so-called Brigands' War, the sentence, this illustrates why the agriculture is important considering how unified Italy was, because the brigandage and the brigands' war damaged the new state's unity and threatened to destabilise it, brings this neatly back to the question. Now, there is a fairly constant critical look at the secondary sources here. When it says the weight of Discala and Duggan's argument is reduced by the fact that there were some relatively prosperous regions in the south, for example, the Bay of Naples and the area around Palermo. It's this sort of detailed use of knowledge to test a historical interpretation that moderates would be looking for if this answer is going to be placed in the top level. This sort of discussion uh, is typical of the higher levels of AO1 and AO3. Knowledge is used to question the degree of disunity and rural unrest. Now, there is, I think, rather a slip of the pen a bit later on. This evidence could reduce the credibility of Stapleton. Now, I think that that's not quite what the candidate means. So be a little bit careful that you read carefully. But on the other hand, these, this, this sometimes just happens. A slight mistake occurs. Don't be too harsh on this. Generally, by the end of this page three, what's clear here is that we have got the use of appropriate and detailed knowledge and we are testing uh, quite well-established historical interpretations. In terms of annotation, it's helpful to make a distinction between the analysis and the evaluation. So the disparity in wealth produced the discontent supporting the evaluation is analysis. There's a, a very specific evaluation where it says, however, the weight of, of, of De Scala and Duggan's argument is reduced by the fact that by the side of that, evaluation would be a helpful comment. And it is supported evaluation because some factual material is introduced to test the interpretation. Now, this approach continues on page four. And here you've got quite a detailed and balanced assessment of the view put forward by Stapleton. Now, in some ways, the Stapleton is justified by its factual information. The essay says, this clearly reinforces Stapleton's argument and that adds weight to the interpretation because railways were vital lines of communication, for example. But there is a balance. The weight of the interpretation is reduced when one considers evidence showing regional differences in economic performance. Now, this type of balanced judgment is really quite a, a sophisticated approach to uh, the historian's view. The historian is being taken, uh, in, in his, his view is being, is being taken apart very effectively here. And there's a constant critical approach that's shown. So in terms of evaluation, supported evaluation, AO3, would be uh, really quite an appropriate uh, marginal comment. And I think, given, the, given the, the balance and given the detail, it's also helpful here to say at what level. Now, is this some evaluation? Is it simply a, a comment on Stapleton? Well, clearly not. Is it good evaluation? Well, it's rather more than that, given the balance and given the detail. Is it very good evaluation? Well, I think it's even more than that, because in A-level terms, this is excellent evaluation. This is a really thoughtful uh, analysis of what this historian is saying. So please don't be afraid, if it's well supported and balanced, to make that excellent evaluation. This is excellent evaluation, if sustained, will take this candidate uh, to the highest level for AO3. And also the discussion of the extent of economic unity and disunity is also very high in AO1. So this is, by A-level standards, 
a, a strong piece of writing. It's, it's well focused and it's evaluative. Now, stepping back to where we are so far in this essay, uh, there is clearly a debate. It is clearly well structured. It is clearly analytical and focused. However, we are now at page four, and only at page four, at the bottom of page four, do we actually get to a primary source. Now, it is true that we are not expecting to see primary sources on every page, but the use of primary evidence is quite an important consideration uh, in the overall marking of this script. And I think it wouldn't have been out of order for the teacher to have pointed out, perhaps in some guidance, the need to introduce primary sources before this, because the evaluation of the secondary sources is strong, but when the primary source is introduced on four, which is a distinguished economist condemning the Italian economy, this is rather less strong because the evaluation rather depends on being a qualified professional. Well, that's not too strong. Uh, all economists presumably are qualified professional. What do we know about this particular economist? And this was a report to the government. It's unlikely that elements would have been exaggerated is again, not too well supported. There's very little uh, factual support uh, to uh, confirm this primary source in contrast to the considerable factual support that's gone into evaluating Stapleton. So the impression may be given by page five that this is uh, an essay which relies a lot on the evaluation of secondary sources, but the primary sources may not be so strong. Now, this, this may not be at all borne out by what's happened, but this is the impression that the candidate's given. This is really rather a warning. We, we rather hope that as the essay goes on, there is going to be more use of primary sources. But by the use, by in, in annotation that of that, you would not be writing excellent or very good evaluation by the side of that primary source. It's, uh, I suppose it notes... Uh, what it is, it's a report, but it's not very developed. So the annotation uh, might be used, primary source used, but you will not be annotating excellent or, or very good by the side of that. The a candidate then on page five does begin to introduce rather more primary evidence. There is the uh, syllabus of errors here, but again, the comment on it isn't as strong as the comments on the secondary sources. The sources reliability could be questioned that is essentially a piece of propaganda. Now whether propaganda is exactly the word that you would use to describe the syllabus of errors as a sort of major statement by the Pope, I think what the candidate rather means is that its intention is to warn or persuade. The choice of propaganda there isn't as happy. So we're getting the impression that though there is some evaluation of the primary evidence, it is at the moment at a rather lower level than the evaluation of the secondary evidence. Its value is, is given, it's a valuable piece of evidence that supports the interpretation of Pearson's stars, it's valuable insight into the papal mindset at the time. He's not really saying anything more than it just shows you what the Pope thought. Well, obviously, it shows you what the Pope thought because that is what he's written. So though there is a critical sense, it's simply not as developed as a critical sense, for example, when looking at the work of the historian Stapleton. The candidate is possibly aware uh, that there is need to contextualise this source. And on page six, this is done. It's given further credence by the new Italy worsened relations with the church with the introduction of anti-clericalism and so on. But in terms of actually evaluating the source, this is a little oblique. What the most valuable point of the source is that it strengthens Pearson Stiles' view. So really what is happening here is that this source is used is being used to back up a comment on the secondary source. It's quite important to draw a distinction here. The main use of this is in AO3 as a piece of evidence to strengthen the view of two historians. The actual evaluation of the source, though attempted, is not really excellent. 
It's simply the, the information around it isn't really used to test the view enough. Now, by this stage, there is the introduction of more uh, primary evidence. So we're almost breathing a sigh of relief because it, this is obviously a strong and analytical answer. It would be a great pity if there weren't enough primary evidence used. So we've got a speech here by Victor Emmanuel to Parliament in 1871. Now, this is received some critical comment. He seems to be stating that there is less tension, less disunity, because of the Rome will be the peaceful and respected seat of the pontificate, but that would be more useful if it were more explicitly linked to the question. We're really rather having to make a, a bit of a jump here. The candidate does use another primary source when he looks at uh, King Victor Emmanuel's speech to Parliament in 1871, in which he quotes, and eventually he does interpret this because he says the source contests the view of Pearson Styles because it suggests a delicately balanced equilibrium exists between the church and state, not suggestive of friction between the two institutions. Well, that interprets this source and it looks at the provenance of the source, but uh, why did Victor Emmanuel have this vested interest in the head of the state? What's the context? Uh, the amount of information that's being brought uh, to bear on this source is, is, is rather less than the amount of factual knowledge which is used when considering, for example, uh, the view of Stapleton. So we're moving in the right direction, but what we haven't yet achieved is the application of both knowledge and provenance to the sources taken. But the sources are being used to test Pearson's styles. So annotation for, to the effect that the primary source is being used and that there is some evaluation would be appropriate. But the sort of very good or excellent evaluation of the primary source wouldn't here be so justified. Now, on page seven... The essay moves on uh, to the uh, north-south divide, and this is uh, some evidence is produced for this from from Duggan's point of view. The the common idea that only two percent of Italians spoke Italian. Well, th this this is quite often stated in books, so I think it's something of an exaggeration, but that that's that's quite a common view. And there is some evidence produced, again, to support Duggan's point of view that the new state was left with its identity unresolved because of these differences. And we've got now uh, another use of primary source at the bottom of page seven. This is from Luigi Farini in the Count to Cavour uh, when he meets uh, Gary Bord. He says, what barbarism? This is not uh, Africa and so on. Now, there's an evaluative comment. The source is credible evidence because this is a view of a person from the north and it's useful in uh, representing the attitudes of the ruling elite. So, again, there, there's a movement towards evaluating the source. Now, some knowledge is used because uh, the, the candidate has bothered to see that uh, Farini was uh, a close supporter of Cavour. I think possibly it would have been helpful to know a little bit more about him. I think sometimes candidates forget that this isn't an examination. You can actually find out quite a lot about these sources. And why not? Why don't we know more about uh, Farini here? But uh, it's moving in the right direction. It's got some evaluation of, based on the uh, identity of the, uh, of the author. And it's, it's used directly. But the evaluation is still not very good or excellent. There is some knowledge, but it's not very developed. Now, the candidate does seem rather happier when uh, evaluating the, the secondary sources. Uh, there is a knowledge of the Brigands' War which supports Duggan's view of the very destructive and disunifying effect of this, There's some detailed knowledge used. And again, some primary evidence appears at the bottom of page 8 in the view of uh, General Pinelli, to his troops, uh, obviously denigrating the southern Italians, uh, regarding them, uh, showing the, the, the degree of disunity. And again, there's an evaluative comment. The credibility of the statement is questionable because of the nature of the source. Obviously, it's designed to motivate troops uh, and would have been exaggerated. 
and it's again uh, the, the the focus is rather on the authorship of the source and its its use in supporting a historical interpretation but the actual knowledge the context isn't as strong so we're, we're into some good evaluation based on the the nature of the source but the knowledge is again rather weaker so the Annotation could say PS eval, but I think it's quite important uh, to indicate at what level it is. Now, this is probably good rather than very good or excellent. Page 9 confirms the candidate's ability to assess secondary evidence and also maintain a balanced analysis. While Duggan's view seems to suggest that Italy was disunited, Stapleton contradicts this, as Italy was politically united. Um, it is a requirement that different overall views are evaluated and this is supported. This is supported by the fact that the whole of Italy adopted the same constitution and so on. There isn't a problem with this. Now, uh, some primary evidence is used again. It's supported by Victor's and Emmanuel's address to Parliament in 1871, which says, the work to which we consecrated our life is accomplished. Long trials, Italy is restored to herself and to Rome, and that's explained, supports the view that Italy was united. It illustrates in the eyes of the political establishment the unthinkable had occurred. That's fine. That's, that's one of the important things, that primary evidence is properly interpreted and linked to the question. Now, this time, the source is a subject to more criticism. That is, Italy was united under the same institutions is less credible when one considers that it was Piedmont's institutions that were imposed on Italy, Piedmont's uh, king that became king of Italy. Now, this is stronger. This interpretation, this, this evaluation of Victor Emmanuel is the strongest piece of evaluation of a primary evidence that we've seen so far. It's appearing rather late in the essay, but this is, this is uh, much better, and it's quite a developed analysis of really what he's saying, woven into a general argument uh, about, the whole, about the level of unity in Italy. The integration of primary evidence into a discussion with secondary sources on interpretation continues on page 10. There's a well-chosen source, uh, Mazzini's indictment of the new Italy in 1871. Now, this not only looks at the who Mazzini was, important figure in the Risorgimento, and so on, and uh, suggests that he was likely to have been critical of the view of the new Italy, and it's used to test uh, Stapleton's argument. And there is some knowledge here. His argument does have credibility and cannot be disregarded because Italy remained unified until the Second World War. Well, this is rather sort of generalised knowledge, but nevertheless here you have got some knowledge You've got some knowledge of the author and the reliability of the source. So I think we're, this is rather stronger evaluation, but I would uh, hold far from calling it excellent. So, so far, this is quite a closely argued essay. There is hardly any narrative. Um, the focus remains on unity throughout. There's a, a very good uh, assessment of secondary evidence, and there is some evaluation of primary material. Now, the primary material is, the candidate is aware of the need to introduce primary material. Halfway down the page says a statement by Marco Minghetti adds weight to the Pearson Stiles view, suggests that it proved a difficult task to unify the kingdom. It's a credibility because of who he was, a former prime minister of Italy, and the level of evaluation now moves up a step because as well as looking at who wrote the source and how credible it is, there is now some uh, solid historical knowledge. So there is provenance, uh, there is explanation, and there is supporting knowledge. Now that is really what we would be looking at, a, a very good or even touch of excellent evaluation of this source. Those three elements uh, are there. Now, it's come at a rather late stage in the proceedings. We've established, I think, that the overall analysis is good. The overall use of uh, secondary material uh, is also good. And at, at this stage, the candidate seems to be catching up 
in the way that he's handling the primary material. By page 12, the writing has really um, a, a flowering, I think, in terms of analysis. There's a, there's a strong analysis of the, the degree to which uh, it is Italian unification, or simply Piedmontization. And th there's no doubt about it that in terms of AO1, page 12 shows a, a, a quite a firm grasp of the issue. There is another source introduced. This is a letter written by to Victor Emmanuel by Cavour in December 1860. And again, it's rather a pity here because the opportunity to look at the context in which this source was written, and it's quite a useful source, which argues that, that unification has got to be imposed by, by physical force, not a genuine unification. That's rather lost. We have got some knowledge. Cavour never supported the idea of a united uh, North and South. It was only Garibaldi's uh, actions in May and October of 1860 that united Italy. But it is rather generalised. What was actually happening in December 1860? Why did he write that particular letter? And so, in a sense, it's a good, well-chosen source. It is quite useful. It is applied to the argument. But in itself, the evaluation is just lacking the, the depth and the detail that you find in the evaluation of both the interpretations generally and of the secondary material. But the, 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 certainly the, 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 the bottom of that page shows a, a, a quite a, a strong use of detailed and accurate knowledge to test an interpretation which uh, indicates really rather I think by this stage confirms our high view of AO1. By page 13 it's time to sum up. The conclusion is by and large follows from the analysis that uh, has been taken and I think uh, the end of the paragraph has a nice touch. It's quite a death synthesis. The whole tone of the argument is that it, it, it is not entirely conclusive and a nuanced judgment such you get at the end of that page uh, seems rather appropriate. Now sometimes uh, I think candidates feel that they have to come down one way or the other but of course in, in a long and detailed study like this it may not be entirely apparent that there is a, a clear-cut answer so please uh, don't discourage them from a, a more nuanced conclusion uh, such as being established here. Now overall the annotations and the, the analysis of this piece of work leads us to a conclusion that this is a strong piece of overall analysis. It's, it's relevant, there's a lot of detailed information here. There is no reason why uh, the highest level mark in AO1 should not be given. This certainly uh, is justified by the way that the candidate has organised and sustained uh, this analysis. So there's no problem there. And I think too, in terms of AO3, there would be no problem in seeing this at the highest level, that there is knowledge applied to interpretations, primary sources are applied to uh, interpretations, the interpretations are named, they are specific and appropriate historians. Now, uh, some people might not think, oh, well, there are some A-level uh, books written for A-level students. That's perfectly all right. Not all of them are from A-level students. I mean, Duggan is, for example, uh, a work which is certainly would, would augment A-level studies. It isn't uh, aimed at A-level. The choice of historical works is perfectly acceptable at this level and there's been a consistent uh, analysis and evaluation. But we are rather left as with a quandary to know what to do about the primary sources. They are not generally at the same level as the other two interpretations, but there is evaluation and I think here uh, a mark of seven would be appropriate. The, it doesn't hit the highest level, but there is a critical sense throughout. There is some attempt to use knowledge. There's certainly some attempt to use some context and some awareness of the evaluation of the nature of the sources. But they do start rather late in the essay, and it takes some time for the candidate, as it were, to catch up with the evaluative skills there. Now it's not at all unusual when marking coursework for different levels to be established in the three assessment objectives. It shouldn't be assumed that because someone has scored very highly in AO1 
that regardless, it's likely to your, as it were, you read across the column and they're going to score equally highly in the other two assessment objectives. So please uh, bear that in mind. Overall, this has a mark of 37, which is a strong mark. If it was to go to full marks, then the evaluation of the primary material would need to be uh, far more developed. This is a good piece of work. Uh, it's been at for an A-level standard, and I think it's been appropriately rewarded, and I hope that it's been helpful to, as it were, to have this commentary on it. Mm -hmm.